and I guess they I got shot nine times, twice in the head, twice in the head, one in the neck, one in the shoulder, and the rest was in the leg. My leg got broke from the gunshot wound. So when I came back into the body, I, I got up off the floor, walked into the bedroom to see all the bodies on the floor, and I felt guilty, man. I felt like it was my fault, like, damn, man. So I clammed in the bed, put the covers over me, my brother, and I just wanted to die, man. I wanted to wake up dead. Next thing you know, I woke up, I'm in the hospital with my moms and my sister and uh, my girl over me saying, yo, yo, who did this, who did this? And that's how that happened, bro. I knew, you know, the cat, Kev, Kevin Clark, I knew it was him. To this day, I, I regret me knowing their voice because I felt like if I didn't know their voice, um, maybe they wouldn't have shot everybody. Maybe, but I recognize him and try to talk to him like, yo, Kev, what you doing, man? That's when he flipped out. Don't say my fucking name, you know what I mean? That's when he started barking out, snatched the mask off. Most definitely, but with, all right, let me put it like this. How would I put it? After that happened, when they asked me, you know, my sisters and them, they all asked me, who did this, who did this, who did this? When I'm in the hospital, this, this is how the police approach me. I'm in the hospital, the doctor's trying to save me, the police come, the detectives, and I think a DA, a Bronx DA was with them. But it was a serious situation, man. Five people found shot up in the Bronx. So when they came in, I'm halfway alive and half dead, man. But the doctors is like telling them we, we need to try to save him right now. We only, I, he only, we, but the, the, uh, I would call the, the district attorney or whoever he was. We need five minutes alone with him. This is what they told the doctors, you know, and my family. Um, I'm trying to recall. So the doctor said, I don't think he have five minutes. Huh? But the, they said, well, we need those five minutes. So my family and the doctors had to leave out the room. You know, family crying, screaming. They had to listen to the law. So they said, well, okay, we're gonna put this tape recorder on your chest. Do you recognize this as a tape recorder? I'm like, yes. So they asked me, you know, questions like, who's the president? I think Reagan was the president at that time. I said, Ronald Reagan, you know what I mean? And then, uh, you see what this is? They, you know, a pencil. Okay, he's conscious. Was you present at 1295, the Grand Concourse, at a certain time? Bye, 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 bye. Yes. You feel me? Um, who was you with? You know they're all dead, right? You know you're the only one that could. You know you're dying, right? I said, now what do? I don't know the other two cats. You feel me? So, who shot you? And I was like, Kevin. You feel me? It was like, Kevin who? I said, my sister's boyfriend. I didn't, I didn't really think I knew his last name at that time. Did he act alone? I said, no, he had two others with him. Did he know when he shot, shot you with? What type of gun? I said, I don't know, man. And then it seemed like my, you know, my spirit, again, left my body, man. And now I could look and see from a spiritual perspective, like, I'm dead. So now they're asking me questions and I'm not answering. They grabbed my pulse and they took the tape recorder, and like, he's out of here, and left. As soon as they left, seemed like my spirit went back into my body. The doctor came, grabbed me. He's like, you okay? I said, yeah. It's like if I didn't, my spirit, it's like God saved me, bro. Not just from getting shot, but from the questioning, you know, it, it's deep, man. He didn't get scooped up right after that. I think he was on the run. 
And they wind up, he wind up turning himself in somewhere in Philly. He wind up telling on the other two cats. I think he told the police he was dead, but he didn't do no shooting. The police, they took three different bullets out of me. They took different bullets out of the rest of them. So they basically said, okay, well, you feel me? He didn't act, you know, when somebody had two guns. Repercussions physically, no. But verbally, yes, because you hear little things. And the person that you hear it from, that's a part of you, that hurts more so than cats that you don't even give a fuck, you don't even know. My situation was that situation, and I don't regret my situation. You understand? They tried to murder me, and they had no reason to do that under no circumstance. They just didn't try to take my life, but five other people, man, y'all, cold-blooded murders for what? Anything you, you would have asked me for, I would have gave it to you. So there was no reason for that. And to me, to me, now people might feel another way. I could have paid someone to retaliate. Cash was coming all day. You understand? So at the end of the day, I don't care what no one says. And to me, I did not snitch on Rich. I did not snitch on Alpo. Or anybody, Lulu. I didn't want to take the stand, personally speaking. You feel me? But my lawyer advised me to do it because they're going to be on you afterwards. You're already on the radar now. Who is this fucking kid? You understand? Because when I got shot, it was like a thousand people were more at the hospital. Outside, like. So that raises... Curiosity. My lawyer advised me to like, yo, you should, but this is what I'm going to have them do. I'm going to have them grant you immunity. Anything that they question you about on the stand cannot be used against you from this point on, on back. So go ahead, because, you know, they really wanted to know, you know, these dudes. And one of the cats that shot me, this is real tough, was... One of the cats that they first brought up, you know, juveniles could get locked up when they 15. He was one of those dudes. He had, did his time and he came home and he did this situation, did this. So that's what they was really trying to implicate the reason why they put this type of people away. Good movie. Good movie, man. Excellent cast. Everybody played their role to perfection. Cameron did a good role playing out, but Wood Harris did a good played a good role playing me. Lulu, good role, good movie, man. But at the end of the film, why do you make it look like I was wearing a wire and told on Alpha? So here I present a film to them, trap to try to save a generation. Like, wake up, man. Why do y'all destroy my character to the streets that who I'm trying to talk to to make it look like I was a snitch so that they can't hear the message? Because who want to listen to a snitch? So that's when I, you know, question who are these guys? Maybe they're all one trying to solidify what they're doing is right and we're wrong.